It's so simple, and you're going to experience it today. So I wanted to give you this little bit of a backstory so that you understand that no matter where you're at today, no matter what's happened to you, none of that damage is permanent. I don't care who broke up with you, who divorced you, how much financial ruin you've been in, how much physical disease you've had, how many surgeries you've had, how many babies you've had, how many deaths you've experienced, or how much trauma has happened to you. It can come out of your nervous system. So why am I talking about this at this conference? Because that's the only thing, that stuff that's still in your nervous network is the only stuff that stands between you and you being a pillar in your community, using your skills, your resources, your talents, your particular genius that is here to a animate you, okay? And that is your gift to the world. So it's an old-fashioned notion that we're just going to have to muscle through and climb over our stuff and irregardless of it, which I did pull myself up by my bootstraps by continuing to ask how am I going to heal this and what can I do and how can I be a good mom on top of it, but it's hard because every day you have to pull yourself over that same mountain again and again. And usually it comes up at night when you don't have as much support, right? So even things that we do for addictions are a cover-up for this pain. So you want to heal an addiction? Heal the pain that started the addiction. Your addiction falls off like an old Band-Aid because there's nothing underneath it that you're trying to suppress. So this technique works on all of that stuff. It works for veterans. It works for PTSD. If I can take a guy who's just gotten out of the military and had to shoot up a bunch of people and feels really sick inside about the whole experience and feels ripped off because he's not feeling more like a man like he thought he would from being in the military, but now he feels like a murderer and nobody wants to be around him and he's so angry and I can take him and in a matter of hours, depending on how many hours he wants to work, but it could take five hours, it could take ten hours, maybe broken up into small sessions, maybe in just one session. But that PTSD can come out of his nervous system and he can be a good daddy. He can be a loving husband and he, a gentle, kind, noble person. And his nobility, his willingness to put his life on the line is what took him into that, right? So now he can use that noble warrior strength to do something else with. We can recycle these perfectly good human beings into the upgraded version that you were born to be. And we are that crossover generation. We have these beautiful indigo children coming in, and we're the bridge between the funky old paradigm that is dying, that we are still carrying in our heads, and the new paradigm that these kids are like, hey, what problem? I'm ready for it. Okay, so anyone who's been enculturated needs to know how to do this. So I'm going to show you today so that you have a practical hands-on demonstration, and it's not just me telling you about something great, but you can experience it in your own body. So I'm going to ask you to focus on what feelings come up for you when you think about being the person standing up here or the person who's holding community space at your house or the person who's putting their invention out there, or whatever it is that you know when you ask your heart, what am I supposed to do on this earth? And your heart answers some huge thing that you go, oh my gosh, me? Are you, are you sure you have the right person? Right? So think about what it is that you would like to improve. And maybe you don't want to be the leader of it, but you want to be the collaborator in that project. When we, when we say leader, we're talking about initiative, consistency, persistence, and some optimism mixed together. So ask yourself what it is, what am I here to do on this earth? And it's okay if it's not the thing, it may be just a piece of the thing, whatever it is that comes in for you today. Now say to yourself, I'm going to do this and fill in the blank with what that little piece of information was. I'm going to. Can you mumble it out loud? 
the answer, I'm going to what? I'm going to... Say it again. Now, do you feel any fear come up in your body when you say that? Raise your hand if you feel any discomfort at all. Any wiggles, any uh, clenching in the stomach, holding of the breath. Great, that's almost everybody. Me too. So this is how I deal with it. Okay? I deal with it by working the meridian points of my body. So I'm going to show you those points right now. So everyone find your collarbones. And we're going to begin to learn EFT. EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Technique. Could be called the Freedom Freedom Technique because you can use it on anything from chronic pain and illness to depression to pain to simple fears like the one that's coming up inside you now or insecurities, okay? So finding your collarbones, drop underneath them and feel around in the top of your chest for anything that feels sore. I want you just to press around and see if you can find a little sore spot in here somewhere. Can you find that kind of tender spot in the front of your chest? Somewhere in your upper pecs? Good. And you're going to press there and you're going to take a deep breath and a big sigh. Because <sighs> energy travels on sound and breath and it travels along electrical meridians in your body and what I'm going to teach you now is how to flush your electrical system by gently jiggling the wires your meridians where you're most conductive which is towards the end of the meridian Now the meridians are all one long meridian like a thread that sews an outfit together it looks like lots of different seams but it's one long thread going through each seam Okay, so any point that you jiggle on your body is going to help, but these points are going to help especially because they're a little more sensitive. Tap the beginning of your eyebrows, right the front of your eyebrows where they start to get fuzzy. Good. Slide down your eyebrows to your temples and tap right there. Breathe. <sighs> front of the cheekbones. So right now, you've been stimulating points that affect a circuit, not just an organ, but a whole circuit, including your bladder, your gallbladder, and your stomach. Tap under your nose, and you're affecting little electrical pulses to travel across your face, up your head, down the back of your head, down your spine, down to your tailbone. Tap under your lips. Now we're affecting pulses that go down the conception vessel, which is a whole band of energy that goes down the front side of your body to meet the one that wraps around your tailbone, right underneath your genitals. Okay, put your hands in kind of a U shape and get right under your collarbone. So you could use two hands like this. It doesn't matter which hand you use or how you tap these points or if someone else taps them for you. You could use one or two hands. You're wired symmetrically bilaterally on each side of your body. So it's okay to alternate hands or alternate sides of your body. You're going to tap right under your collarbones. There's a little divot here between the first rib and the collarbones. Okay? Good. Tap down to your sternum. Breathe. Make some sound. <sighs> Great. Tap the front of your ribs right where they jut out the most in front. If you were to put your hands around the base of your ribs, you'd feel the apex of the curvature of your rib cage sticking out. Last couple of ribs, it's right beneath the nipple line. Okay? Side of the rib cage is going to be right here. Okay? So you can tap this way. You could cross your arms and tap like this. You could even use the back of your knuckles and tap like this. Okay? So you're jiggling these points. Inside of the wrist, I want you to tap right here, right across the wristband. So if you, uh, if you were wearing a wristband, you'd go straight across, making sure that you get this wrist bone. This is the bone that moves back and forth when you move your wrist, so make sure you get on that wrist bone. So what you were just doing on the rib cage was clearing the liver, the gallbladder again, and this is a heart point and pericardium point. Okay, this is the same stuff that acupuncturists use, and they stick a little piece of conductive wire in it 
to force a spark to jump and to heal